We are not going to help you with anything. I want you to handle everything that has to do with your husband yourself, Andrea. Please stop thinking that just because I'm married to your oldest son that we have to help you with everything. What? Ashley? I heard from Reuben already. You asked him to go and help out with his father while he's in the hospital. That is something you can handle all on your own, so don't be asking my husband to go there and help you. Just because he's your child does not make him your slave. That's not at all how I think of my children. I was just told by the doctor that my husband will be in the hospital for some time now. And considering that the new hospital is much closer to your guys' house than it is to mine, I thought it would be better to ask Reuben for the help. I was never meaning for that to seem as though I'd be making him handle everything for me. I wonder about that. I'm sure the moment he started to help out, you'd begin complaining about your knees or something and make him do everything. You can't handle all that simple work because you're so lazy, so you just make my husband and I do all the work. Well, that was never my intention, though, Ashley. Anyway, my family will not be helping you with anything, especially since Reuben has become a lot more busy at work recently. He never has any time during the week to catch a break, so he really has to have his weekends to himself or he'll begin to fall apart. We have to have Saturday and Sunday in order to spend some time together or else I'm going to go mad. So don't expect that either of us will be using our time to come out and help you. That's why I never said he had to come out every week. I just asked that around once a month would be good enough and a huge help for me. And since Reuben is his son as well, my husband would be very happy to see him. It would be nice to have our son come out to the hospital and see his dad while he's going through his treatments. If I've already said that it's going to be impossible, please stop talking about it. If your husband really wants to see his son's face, then have him look at some pictures. That should keep him happy, right? Then, at the very least, can you help out? I heard about this from Reuben already, but earlier this year you quit your part-time job, right? If you have all that time on your hands now, it would really be generous of you to come out and help a little every so often. Really, I just need you to go into the hospital once or twice a month to see your father-in-law and listen to what the doctors and nurses have to say about him. Huh? And why should I have to come and help you? I'm not your guys' actual daughter. You have no right asking a complete stranger to come and help you out like that. But you keep telling me that my actual son isn't allowed to come and help us. Uh, no freaking way. This is the exact reason why I hate you so much. If my son isn't going to help out, then I'll ask my daughter-in-law to do it. I really missed out on getting myself a proper mother-in-law, didn't I? <laughs> Excuse me? Just know that no matter what you try and say, we're not coming to help you and your husband. When the husband is in trouble, it's his wife's job to go help. Your husband was kind enough to keep you around all this time, so you go ahead and take care of him and his recovery all by yourself. I was listening to all the voicemails that were left for me, and there was one from you. Did you really end up putting Dad into an old folks home? Yes, I really did. Dad is out of the hospital and all now, but he doesn't have any strength and still requires a lot of attention. The hospital told me he'd never be able to walk on his own again and would need to live in a wheelchair now. So I had to talk with some of the faculty at the hospital about what my options were, and they said the best thing to do was put him into an old folks' home. No way, Mom. So Dad's really going to a home now? Had you and Ashley been able to come over and help from time to time, then I would have thought a bit more about keeping him here at home. But you both are too busy to come and help, right? And since I'm getting old myself, it's becoming too much for me to have to carry him around and do everything in the house. So because of that, I'm really sorry, but your dad has to stay in that home. I hope you can understand where I'm coming from here. I'll make sure to handle all the paperwork and bills for the old folks' home, so don't you worry about that. Wait, wait, wait. You can't do that to him, Mom. There is no way you could just put Dad into a facility like that now. Stop trying to be so selfish now and stay home with Dad and take care of him yourself. Excuse me? Do you have any idea how much it'll cost to have Dad put into one of these homes? That would be a waste of good money. If you just get off your butt and take care of him at home, then it won't cost a penny. If you're worried about money, don't be. 
Both your dad and I have made sure to save up a lot of money throughout the years for things like this. I have the money to put him up for a few years there. What are you talking about? All that money you and dad worked so hard for to save up is supposed to go to us after you're both gone. And considering you both never really had that great of jobs, you can't have all that much money saved up, right? Yet, do you want to use whatever you have left sending dad away like that? You'd only be wasting Ashley's and my inheritance that way. Excuse me, Reuben, what the actual hell do you think you're talking about right now? Who the hell do you think you are to worry about your inheritance at a time like this? None of this money your dad and I have is yours, so don't you dare speak to me like that again, you idiot! You're the freaking idiot, Mom! Using that money which should be ours on someone else like Dad? You were totally healthy, Mom, so stop being so lazy and help care for your husband. No way am I going to let you put Dad into a home like that just because you want to relax and have all that time to yourself. You have no right sending the man you spent so many years married to away like that. It's because he and I have been happily married for this long that I want him to have a better life there than here. I would feel much more happy with my husband going into that home and being cared for by professionals than having him here all alone with just me. Do you have another plan that you care to share with me? Would you and your wife be willing to actually leave that house of yours and come out to help the family for once? You know we can't be asked to do that. I'm busy with work right now and Ashley shouldn't have to care for Dad. I'm just asking that you get off your butt and take care of Dad yourself is all. I will not allow you to put my dad into one of those expensive old folks' homes. Jesus Christ, Reuben. Now, you take care of my old man, and you make sure to take good care of him from Ashley and myself as well. Ashley, what the hell is all of this about now? There are just these huge boxes addressed from you showing up at my house now. I tried calling Reuben about all of this, but he won't answer me. Oh, so all our things are already showing up there. Well, can you make sure to put all those boxes in the living room for us? Answer my frickin' question, Ashley. What the hell are all these boxes doing at my house? I have a funeral to get to today for my husband. So tell me why I have all these boxes dropped off at my house. What? The funeral is supposed to be today? <laughs> Well, then, can you make sure to have all those boxes moved up to the second floor for us? Both Reuben and I feel that with this chance, we're finally going to move back into that house now. What? You're moving into my house? We never thought that your husband would end up kicking that can so quickly. And it's not fair to have only you living in that massive house all by yourself now, right? Therefore, Reuben and I had a little discussion about it, and that's where we decided that we'd use this chance to move into that house with you. So, in other words, you guys are invading my house now? I never thought that the two of you would be so kind as to move in with me. I'm actually really happy to hear this wonderful news from you. You shouldn't be, <laughs> because we're not actually going to be living there with you. <laughs> are you kidding me? You actually think the both of us would move into that house with the intentions of living with you? <laughs> but, but, but you both are going to be moving into this house with me now, right? Correct, but not with you living there as well. So, please hurry up and get out of there once you have all of our things carried in, Andrea. <laughs> From now on, it will be Reuben and I that are living in that house as just the two of us. Excuse me? But I truly did forget that today was the day of your husband's funeral. I was thinking today would be the perfect day to move in. I guess since it'll be too much of a pain in the butt for us to come there today, we'll be moving in tomorrow instead. You hold it right there, Ashley. Are you really trying to kick me out of my own house right now so that you and my son can live here without me? The fact that you'd even think about kicking out an old woman like me. Uh, when Reuben hears about this, he'll be pissed. You think so? Hm. I'm not sure why he'd be pissed off when he was the one that said this plan was okay. Actually, this was his plan in the first place, Andrea. What? We had actually been wondering if we should have a new house built for us or not. But around this part of town, the land is all really expensive to buy, and there was no chance of us affording it. However, as we were starting to give up on the idea of getting a new house built, Reuben's dad died. He then said we could go and get your guys' old house and renovate it into something brand new and modern. 
so we've both agreed that we'll be taking your house now and putting some elbow grease into it and making it look brand new and amazing. <laughs> the oh, there's no way Reuben would say that. So, now that you're aware of everything, I'd like you to get all of your things together after the funeral and get lost. <laughs> we would really like to get started on all the renovations soon. Even if you're asking me to leave, where am I supposed to go? I'm too old now to be finding myself a new house on my own. Can't you both at least find me a place to move to before you come and take this house? Huh? <laughs> we don't care what happens to you after this. Just go and find yourself a room in an old folks home or something. <laughs> Excuse me? It's probably really difficult for a single woman your age to find an apartment that will accept you, right? So I guess the only option you have left is an assisted living home. Then we won't have to worry about you ever again. <laughs> what the hell, Ashley? You both were telling me the whole time before that I couldn't put my husband into a home like that because it would cost way too much money. Yet when it benefits the both of you, you're all open to having me put in one? Back then, neither Reuben or I knew a lot about those kinds of places. But recently, we had a look at some of the cheaper homes, and man, are they cheap. <laughs> if you put yourself in one of those old and run-down homes out in the middle of nowhere, it should only cost around 500 a month. So if you can go to one of those places, please do. So you're just fine throwing me into one of those old places without even thinking about letting me stay somewhere new and comfortable? You both aren't going to make me pay for wherever I go, right? You're going to pay for the home so that I no longer have to live here, right? Huh? <laughs> Why would either of us be paying for you to go into one of those homes? Go ahead and do your best to pay for one of those places using your social security and as little of your savings as possible, please. Neither Reuben or myself are going to give you a single penny. <laughs> well, I'll be. I'm sure in your estate you'll only be around a little while longer, right? So you shouldn't have any problems with leaving this house now and finding a rundown home to go live in, right? <laughs> now, you'd better hurry up and find yourself one of those super cheap old folks' homes before the day is over. From now on, that massive house of yours will be Reuben's and mine. Get out of our way now, you old dying hag! <laughs> I'll give you all I have then. Oh, come on now! <laughs> You're really going to give us all that money your husband left you and whatever you had yourself as well? <laughs> What's happened to you, Andrea? I've had enough of the both of you, and I mean that with all my heart. Today's the day of the funeral of my dear husband, and I didn't expect either of you to come at all to see him buried. But then these boxes all started to show up to my house with your guys' names on them, saying you're taking my house now. Now that I've finally been driven up the wall by you two, I'm taking this house and all my money and giving it to you. Will that be enough to get you both to leave me alone forever? If you can promise me that, then I'll make sure to give you both everything that was in my husband's will and the house. That's a deal! <laughs> then once this funeral is all over with, I'll grab what little I have and be gone. Now you both enjoy the trashed estate that I'm leaving behind for you. This is all coming from my husband's will for you both, so please take that as something very special. What? What do you mean by trashed estate? Well, I'm sorry, but there will be a lot of people coming soon for my husband's funeral. I'll have to be going now. Please excuse me. Hey, Andrea, what the heck is wrong with this whole house? The whole second floor is filled with trash and smells like rotting sewage. Hey, 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 don't be saying all that about the house, all right? This has all been left for you two by your late father, and it should be respected for that very reason. You both asked to have the place, so please talk about it in a more fitting manner. Huh? How the hell is this house supposed to be respected as a gift from your husband? All the awnings in this house are broken, and the chairs in the house are all trashed with tears in them. And the dining table is so old that it looks like there's mold growing in the wood. What the actual hell happened to this place, especially the second floor? That's the house your father-in-law left for you two. Just before he passed away, he was collecting all these old and useless things and putting them upstairs. 
Things like those old dishes and the umbrellas, all those old clothes, the broken machines and electronics. And what was even more interesting is that even though he was bound to a wheelchair, late at night he'd leave the house and go off somewhere. What? Just in the middle of the night, he'd leave the house and wander off. After being discharged from the hospital, his head really went downhill and he became very senile. He would leave the house all night and come back in the early morning with all that junk and have me take it upstairs for him. To him, though, he thought of all of those things as presents for me that he'd gone out and bought. He... he thought all of this garbage was presents for you? When he was younger, he'd always come home with small little gifts for me. He was always thankful for the work I did caring for the house and the kids, so he'd bring me flowers and cake and other little treats to make up for all that. So considering the fact that he was so senile and was probably just thinking about how things were in the past with getting me all those presents, I couldn't throw any of it away. So I did as he said and took it all upstairs and dumped it in the rooms. I had tried just one time to try and toss some of that junk, but when he saw me taking it to the trash, he freaked out and started to ask why I didn't love him anymore. That's why all that junk stayed up there and never got thrown away. So... That's why you told us to enjoy this trashed estate? We can't even get to half of the second floor because there's all this mounds of junk laying around. Well, if you just close some of the doors up there and leave it all be, you shouldn't notice any of the stench. I was planning on having all that junk cleaned out by professionals after my husband passed away so that I wouldn't hurt his feelings any. But both you and my son really wanted that house from me so badly. I had no other choice but to hand it to you both as part of my son's inheritance. <laughs> that was a huge help, though, doing that for me. Are you kidding me right now? You do something about all this trash right now! Why do Reuben and I have to be the ones to clean up your husband's mess now? I told you that I'd be giving you guys everything that my husband left behind, right? In other words, all that he left behind was that house and its junk. Which makes all of it your guys' junk now. So you both please clean it up yourselves. I'd gotten in touch with some professional cleaners before the funeral to ask about how much it cost to clean out that place, and they told me around 15,000. 15,000? That's the amount it cost to clean this whole house for us? There would be a lot of things they'd need to go through and clean, and a lot of machinery would need to be used as well. There also doesn't happen to be a whole lot of professional cleaners in this city. Out of the three companies I asked, they were all saying it cost around that much to get the job done. You have to be kidding me. Oh, but you both have already kicked me out of there, so you can go ahead and do whatever you please with the place. Just remember that that's what he inherited from his dad, so he should treat it with some form of respect. Shut the hell up about that, Andrea. The only option we have now is to throw all of this away. What the hell were you thinking? You told us you'd be giving us everything you had before leaving. We thought we'd be getting more money and things like that from you that you got from your husband. We don't want this trash anymore, so just give us some money. You have to still have something that you're hiding from us, right? I'm sorry to tell you this, but there's nothing else that I'm hiding. What my husband left behind was that house and whatever junk is inside it. What are you talking about? Back when you said you wanted to put him in an old folks home, you said there was more than enough money to do so. But then we both asked that you take care of your husband at home and not waste all that money on putting him in a home, right? You saved all that money by not having to send him away, so that should all be coming to us now, right? Well, I suppose I did save money by not having to put my husband in a home. But that money was going to be coming from my own savings account. My husband never had the money to put himself into one of those homes for very long. What? What are you talking about right now, Andrea? What's going on here? To be honest, he was never really that good at saving money as I was. He was the one paying for the house and all the food and bills, which made me very happy. But with the rest of that money, he'd spend it on presents for me and on himself, never bothering to put any of it away. Well, that's why the only savings he and I ever had came from the money I made working part-time. And since it was all being saved up by me, I became the sole holder of that account. No way! So, 
Really, the only things that my husband had in his will was the house, all the junk in it, and a couple hundred dollars he had left over. I think the things you both have been hoping for all this time is the money that I currently hold. You... you're lying. So this old house and all the garbage in it is all we're able to get from him? We at least wanted enough money in order to pay off some of our debt. Now I have some things to get back to, Ashley. I'll never be going back to that dump anymore, so go ahead and do whatever you want with it. Uh, um, hey mom. We will take care of all of that trash that's been piling up on the second floor. We'll even pay for the cleaners to come in and take care of the deeper and more hard to get stuff. So please, can you come back here and live with us from now on? Huh? You really think I want to talk to you again after the way you behaved a while back? Weren't you both so excited to kick me out of the house and take all the things your dad left behind for you? We we had planned to really enjoy this house, but the money to get it renovated, I had thought that dad would have had some money to give me as well in the will. But, um, he honestly has no money for me, does he? What? What was that? Well, look, you took care of dad these last few months in the house, right? I thought that since you didn't have to waste all the money on sending him into an old folks home, that money would be coming to me. That was how I convinced Ashley into moving here, because we both thought we could renovate the place without spending a dime. So you were serious about wanting your dad's money that badly? I'm sure you've heard part of this from your wife, but there is nothing left in your dad's accounts. You both do your best to save up what you can and use that money. We don't even have any savings ourselves, though. I'm still hiding all of this from Ashley, but... At the beginning of this year, the company I worked for went and restructured everything. Because of that, we seriously have nothing in our accounts. What? The company went through layoffs is what you're saying? Things weren't going so good with the last CEO, so he was kicked out and a new person came in who wanted lots of change. And for the longest time now, I've been in charge of making all the money that goes into our savings. So I went and took little by little out of what we did have saved up and claimed that that was my paycheck every month. I can't believe that's the way you went through all your savings. There was all the bills for things like our health insurance, car insurance, and so much more. But before all of this happened, I had been talking with Ashley about us getting our new house built. However, over time, I couldn't afford something like that anymore, so I brought up the idea that we could get my dad's house and renovate that. And then I'd be able to hide the fact that I didn't have any real money coming in anymore. And that's when you found out the house you got was in tatters, right? And you don't even have the money to pay for the place to be renovated either, right? You've gone through all the savings you had trying to hide the fact that you have been unemployed this whole time. So this is all what's been going on with you? Please, Mom. I get that Dad didn't have much money when he passed, but you have to still have a bit, right? I'll let you come back and live with us as long as you pay for the house to be renovated for us. I'll make sure to get Ashley to help me and... We can save up enough money to hire some cleaners to come in and do a deep clean. And I'll make sure to tell her to be more kind to you from now on. No thank you, Reuben. I'm doing just as I was told and going into a retirement home. Actually, I've already found myself a place to stay and I'm doing all the paperwork right now. What? You're already working on the paperwork? Back when I was looking for a place for your dad, I also started to look around a little for myself. The people at the hospital were also a bit worried about the fact that not even my own son cared to help his parents any and gave me some good recommendations. I was able to care for Dad outside the hospital, but they were wondering what would happen to me after. And the place they recommended is so amazing. Mom, come on now. You don't have to put yourself in a place as lonely as an old folk home. I'm sure that you'll need help with something soon, so you can rely on Ashley and myself for that. So please... Come back here and live with us. And please, use some of your savings to help us. No way in hell, Reuben. No way in hell. I'm really looking forward to all the new people I'll be meeting at this place. I'll be able to chat with all of them about their lives and talk about the lovely life I had with your father. And neither my selfish son or his brainless wife will get in the way of that. No way. Now... You and Ashley have a great time living in that nasty house. I'm no longer going to associate myself with you two, so bye bye
I was able to get right into the retirement home I was hoping for after I finished talking to Reuben. Both Reuben and his wife really wanted to know where I went, and so they both charged into the hospital my husband was at before demanding to know where I was. But before they could cause too much trouble, the nurses called the police and they were both taken out of the hospital. And as the two tried to wrestle themselves away from the police, they could hear all the nurses inside calling them morons and saying that they can't cry for their parents' help only when it benefits them. Soon after that, Ashley learned about how Reuben had lost his job almost a whole year ago, and that he was using all their savings to try and cover that up. She was so shocked by what she had heard, she couldn't even talk to her husband for days. Things for them only became worse, though, as Reuben was having real difficulties finding a job, and those in the neighborhood would start calling them ungrateful and lousy for never going to their father's funeral. I'm not sure who is all behind it, but recently the house has only become more trashed as there's crap all over the yard now, and the first floor looks like it's about to explode too.